Hi everyone, for this project I'll be using Dollar Tree foil cookie sheets, solar lights, and this hodgepodge of other Dollar Tree and recycled items. Let's jump right in and see what I made. I started with these large size disinfecting wipe containers. I removed the lids and labels and used a utility knife to cut off the bottoms. I did this for a total of five containers. Next, I took two containers and slid the top one into the cut bottom of the other, then used duct tape to secure. I did this for all of the containers, creating a five container high tower. Next, I took a Dollar Tree foam ball and cut it in half. I placed it on top of my disinfecting wipes container tower and secured it in place again using duct tape. At this stage, I wanted to create a metal covering and I decided to do that by using these foil cookie sheets from Dollar Tree. These sheets are great for crafting, but when you cut them, they do have sharp edges, so I always wear gloves to protect my hands. To get a nice workable piece, I cut out the bottom of the pan. On the long end, I cut right up to the bumpy part. On the shorter ends, I cut further up along the rim of the pan, leaving about an inch or so of the smooth part as well. So it's going to look like this when it's cut out, right up to the bumpy bits along the long ends, and with about an inch or so of the smooth parts attached on the shorter ends. And I cut six pans like this. They do come as a two pack, but sometimes the tape holding them together does come apart. So make sure that you are getting two for your $1.25. Next, I took one of the foil pan cutouts and wrapped it around the bottom container of the tower. And you can see how the foil pan cut like this perfectly covers this first section. I did a dry run first to get the metal to curve around the container, then went back with some E6000 glue, running a stream under and on top of one of the ends. Then I pulled the other end of metal over top and pressed it into the E6000. Next, I took a strip of duct tape and further secured the two ends. To apply the next piece of metal, I ran another stream of E6000 around the top of the last piece, then took the second piece of metal and placed it on top, pressing it into the glue and curving it around the container. I then lined up the seam in the back with the first wrap and added some E6000 over and under on that one end, pulling the other end over and further securing with duct tape. I then repeated this for the next two sections. And now here it is with four sections of the tower covered. But before I covered the top section, I took one of the metal sheets and cut off about a third of it and then used that larger piece to cover the top. I centered the piece over the ball, then pressed down and molded the foil around the ball. Next, I took scissors and cut away some of that excess and then cut slits in the foil to make it easier to pleat the pieces on top of each other. And I did that all the way around the top, making a nice tight cap. Once I had the shape formed, I added a little E6000 underneath, then further secured in place with strips of duct tape, then wrapped one cohesive piece all the way around. After that, I went back and applied the metal wrap to the top container, again lining up the seam, using E6000 to glue and then further secure with duct tape. Now my tower is completely covered in the foil wrap. For the next step, I'm going to cut slits in the sides of the tower, but because it's going to be difficult to see now that the metal is attached, I'm going to illustrate with this uncovered container. So as you know, coming in right about here is the top of the wipes container. Now I want to cut a hole in the second wipes container, like this one here, pretty close to the top of the container. So I'll use the uncovered one as a guide to find out whereabouts that second container comes in. I can then confirm by feeling around, and since the plastic will be thicker where the two containers butt into each other, I know this is where the second one starts. And so I want to go just below that, and using my utility knife, I cut about a one and one half inch slit. Once that is done, I want to go to the opposite side of the first cut and again, I feel around for the next joint point. Once found, I want to make another one and one half inch slit above that. So to recap, I'm going to find the second from the top container by either measuring down with another container and or feeling my way. Then I'll make a one and one half inch slit along the right side at the top of that container, then another one and one half inch slit along the left side at the bottom of that container. For the next step, I took two plastic hangers and removed the hook with some wire cutters. Any two hangers will do, but these two are from Dollar Tree, so they have this little end section, and I went ahead and removed those two. Next, I cut the crossbar in the middle. This enabled me to pull that bottom bar in towards the top of the hanger. I then took some duct tape and secured it into place. I'll do that for both sides and for both hangers. Once my hangers were assembled, I slid them through the slits on each side of the tower, creating kind of arms coming out. From here, I want to build up around those arms, so I'm going to take some plastic water bottles. And I'm only going to be using this middle portion, so I cut off the top and also the very bottom. 
Now, I just happen to have a bunch of water bottles with tops cut off from my last DIY, where I made this beautiful rain chain from linked shower curtain rings and cut off tops of bottles, which I have painted with hammered copper spray paint. I added some embellishments and then hung for a beautiful garden accent, which also makes a functional and useful water diverter when it rains. I'll link the video in the description if you'd like to check it out. But for now, I just wanted to explain why I have all these bottles with tops cut off and copper on the edges. And so, like I was saying, I cut off the bottle tops and also the very bottom and then linked the bottles together, inserting one into the other. I did this for a total of four bottles and then secured the bottles together with strips of duct tape. Once all the bottles were attached, I took the bottom bottle and cut that on a diagonal. Next, I took another Dollar Tree foam ball, but this time I only cut off about the top one-fourth of the ball on each side. From there, I took one of the bottles, centered it on the bottom of the cut ball, and then marked with a Sharpie, and used scissors to cut out, and then I did this for both sides. Next, I took the tape bottles, and on the flat end, I inserted the foam pieces, then secured with duct tape. From here, I slid the bottle combos onto the hanger frames. And you can see here how that diagonal cut helps line up the arm with the tower. And then to attach the two together, you guessed it, I'm going to be using some duct tape. And once I've secured the right hand side, I will repeat this on the left hand side. To wrap, I use the same method using the foil cookie sheets. I cut off the bottom of three cookie sheets. When cut, they measure about 15 inches in length. So I took a sheet and cut about four inches off. I use that piece to cover the foam top, again cutting off any excess, cutting slits, and then folding around the top, then securing with duct tape. Next, I took the rest of that sheet and wrapped, glued, and duct taped it on to the plastic frame as I did with the main tower. To cover the smaller part of the arm that attaches to the tower, I took another metal sheet and cut that one in half. I then took one of the halves and wrapped it around a full water bottle to get the shape. To get more flexibility, I cut one and one half inch slits along the bottom, then wrap the piece of foil around, pulling up the foil tabs created by making the slits. Working now from the back, I'll glue down with some E6000 and then secure with duct tape. In the front, I'll add some E6000 to the seam and fold and crimp the metal to secure. For the tabs, I'll add some E6000 underneath, cut away any excess, and further secure with some hot glue. And now our little art piece is shaping up and ready to paint. Can you guess what it is yet? Well, maybe this will help. I'm going to spray the entire piece with some green spray paint. I started with this color, leafy green, but quickly realized the color Emerald Isle was a much better fit. And yes, I am trying to DIY a metal yard art cactus. I just love the character and charm these pieces bring to a yard or garden, and I think our DIY version will come in pretty close. So after painting all over with the green paint, I wanted to add on some accents using black and brown acrylic paint. I painted the spurs by painting a circle with spikes coming out with the black paint, then added the brown paint in the middle. I painted the accents in straight rows, separating each by about four inches in the row, and then the rows by about two inches. And I painted down the length of the arms and the trunk. To support the cactus and help it stand, I used a Dollar Tree plant hanger on a stake. The hanger part is a little wide, so I had to squish it down a bit by pressing it into a hard surface. Then from here, you can place the hanger in your yard or garden and then slide the cactus right over top. It looks great as is, but the crowning glory of this DIY version has to be these Dollar Tree flower-shaped solar lights. I just removed the leaves by popping off the top and then they were ready to become the perfect flower topper for our cactus. The pointed sticks poke right through the foil and then get supported by the foam ball underneath. You see, there is a method to the madness. They're gorgeous by day, adding a vibrant and colorful accent to the metal cactus. And then by night, wow, illumination. And if you're wondering about that cute little metal art flower pinwheel, yes, that is also a Dollar Tree metal yard art DIY, which you can check out in this video here, which also features the rain chain mentioned earlier. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.